even in phone conference. <laughs> so, and uh, the idea originally, as they said, was to have a national tour, huge, big one, with different universities involved in that. But due to the visa problems that she faced, when we went to Toronto, last, uh, to Toronto, Canada, last uh, conference, she was supposed to come with us to the States and start her tour. But that was not possible because she was able to go to Toronto, but then she was not allowed to get into U.S. Uh, land. So we continue, and I said to them, anyway, we will try and try and try. When she was granted her visa, so it was impossible for us to coordinate again the whole national thing, but I knew that in my area, in the East Coast, I had my university and three more universities interested still in having her. So then we decided, the organizing committee decided, that we were able to do it and we did it. So she went to uh, Baltimore and she uh, had presentation there in two important universities that we have there. One is uh, Maryland University, and the other one is my university. <laughs> and then after that, she traveled to uh, Edinburgh University, and uh, after that she went to Indiana. And let me tell you something that is important, very important to know. In India, Indiana University has one of the biggest library in a campus, and uh, all the collection of uh, Dr. Basayo is there, and people worship her. So she is very important in the women's studies at that university. Not only at that university, I believe that in many other universities, because even though we were only able to program her for the East Coast. People from the central area, from uh, the uh, west coast, they were emailing me and telling me, send her, send her to our institution, send her to our campus. And in Indiana, there is also a very important uh, women's institute, very famous, and Dr. Vasayo's name is well known there. So she is a well known Cuba in the United States, and in women's study, some of the curriculums, they have her and her books for their courses. So she also went to my alma mater because when I moved to the United States, I studied in West Virginia University. And that's my alma mater from the United States, but from here is Havana <laughs> University. So um, there, in West Virginia University, she went when uh, Dr. Elizabeth Iglesias used to work there. And she, how many years after? 10 years after? So 15 years after. How, how many years after one? After she went to WVU. 11 years. 11 years. So 11 years after, she was able to go again. We knew people, as Elizabeth said, we knew people, but still, people are eager to know about what's going on here, very positive, and very proud of having her there. So she did that tour, and she came back, and because of all the different universities that were able to have her, they asked again for another tour, and that's why we are going to again another tour for her next year. Okay, so. <laughs> Another thing that uh, I wanted to talk today is about us Cuban who live in the United States. Uh, we are part of an organization like this one because we want to have open dialogue and to leave the embargo to be able to have no more, uh, no more conversation. So uh, there are some Cubans like me in the United States that we coordinate and we support organizations, American organizations, that we also thank all of them because they are Americans. And they help us to be under the international spotlight and to be known 
and that's very important. The work that they are doing is amazing, and we have to take our hands off. So, um, if you know some Cuban Americans that they are positive to the dialogue, for the Americans who are here, give them my contact information or through the organization that we can coordinate and help each other. Also, those who are from other universities that we are, we don't have the contact info, give us to us that maybe we can put you in the tour general, okay? So, here's Carolina from the Federation of Cuban Women. We worked right here. We have worked together. Uh, we were in Europe together uh, at the Women's International League for Peace and Freedoms International Congress passing a resolution uh, to, normal, to normalize relationships between the U.S. And, um, and Cuba, as well as for other countries around the world to support Cuba in this period. So that was in 2004. Yeah, that was busy. <laughs> and uh, Carolina also went to another World Co International Santa Congress in, in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz Bolivia. Bolivia. Um, and also similar uh, resolution that she passed and educated the women in uh, Women's International League. I also have a question. We're learning Spanish. Okay. Adelina Folda, do you me ayuda? Sí. Es importante que haya hecho mención de lo que se ha logrado dentro, o sea, que ha impulsado so, el, oh, el, oh, el, el, oh, el, o sea, que no, ha hecho mención de hace mención de de Estados Unidos dentro de la liga que es quien ha impulsado realmente eh, dentro de los congresos a que se aprueben mociones, resoluciones sí, por We have to recognize Cuba, them for the work they have to quien impulsa realmente el, la, la aprobación de resoluciones y mociones dentro del congreso de la liga contra el bloqueo por la libertad de los cinco por la normalización de las relaciones Cuba y Estados Unidos. Yo creo que realmente quien lleva el peso de esa de promover Those la aprobación de esa Cuba Cuba really fought for the lifting of the blockade, for the approval of all these um, normalization, uh, for the normalization of the relation between the Cuba and the U.S. So all the work they have done, we really need to recognize it because they were really the ones that um, fought really hard.